Okay, gang, let's get started. Once again, my name is Charlie Coiner. I am the owner of First Down Playbook. More importantly, I'm a 30-year coach, uh, nine in the NFL, the rest in college. Um, but my, my mission in life right now has been to help football coaches at all levels from a football playbook perspective. And uh, that's where First, First Down Playbook came from. Essentially, just trying to help. We, we believe that it always starts with a drawing. And we understand there's different ways that you're going to teach, uh, regardless if you're teaching uh, at the youth level, at the high school level, at the college level, or the NFL level. But we believe that uh, what we do here provides you a foundation to get started with your teaching. Now, along with me tonight will be Kendall Acho. She's our chief operating officer at First Down Playbook. Uh, COO, just a big word for she does most of the work. She'll be manning the chat section tonight. Uh, and what I mean by that is that uh, any of you that, and the very few of you out there right now that haven't uh, that have done a Zoom deal or haven't done a Zoom deal because of uh, COVID right now, but uh, she will have the chat section where you can actually put your questions in. You do not have to wait till the end to put your questions in. I won't answer them till the end, but uh, to make sure that you get it in before we get off of here, if you feel like you have a question, go ahead and type it in. She'll have it ready to go at the end of the webinar. Now, we're going to have an, an, enough coaches on here. The reason I'm waiting to the end, I don't want to, you know, slow down and uh, answer a question that uh, might be holding up. We'll, we'll have nearly 100 coaches on here tonight. So I uh, just want to make sure we do all that at the end. But please, uh, whatever you do, ask your questions. That's what Really, that's what the youth football chalk talk is all about. There are a lot of uh, uh, people that have answers on the internet these days. Inter internet these days, I should say. And I look at it, and oftentimes I go, you know, um, there there may not there may be an easier way to do that. There may be a smarter way to do that. And that's what we're going to try to do tonight. Okay, so um, let's get to it. Uh, tonight it's the five three defense, but as we do a lot with anything here. I just want to start with the foundation of defense in general. And, and where I am right now, I'm in our youth defensive terms, and I'm going to blow uh, the screens up like I'm going to do quite often tonight, just so you can see. But I just want to talk to you a little bit as I'm in this window right here, just about two things that are important. They're important whether you're dealing with a 6-2 like we did two weeks ago, a 4-4 four, four, like we're going to do in a couple of weeks or the 5-3 as we're going to do tonight. The way we refer to gap responsibility, and this is pretty common, is we refer to gap responsibility as the A gap being between the center and the guard, the B gap being between the guard and the tackle, C gap, tackle, tight end, and D gap outside the tight end. We call it in first down playbook, we call anything outside of a wing, we call that an edge. Uh, and, and very seldom do you ever see unless you have an unbalanced formation where you have a double edge. But as you hear me talk tonight and, and refer to the A gap, the B gap, and the C gap, that's what I'm referring to. Now, the, another thing that's going to come up tonight and often comes up, regardless of what kind of defense you're talking about, are techniques. And you will find uh, variations of techniques throughout football. But for the most part, you're going to see where the center, all right, if a nose guard, and we'll be talking about that a lot tonight, a zero technique is head up on the, on the center. A one technique or a shade <clears throat> is shaded to the outside of the center one way or the other. So it would be a one strong or a one weak, depending on what the formation was. Now, as you go out with a guard and tackle, the even numbers, all right, either way, a two or a four, what you're going to have is going to be a head up a head up technique. A three technique or a five technique is outside shade. If you have an inside eye, and what that means is that this defensive player would have his right foot in the guard's crotch right there, splitting him down the, splitting him down the middle of his right foot, that would be a two eye. He would be putting his eye on the inside eye of the uh, guard right here. A four eye would be the inside eye of the inside uh, eye of the tackle right here. So we go two I, two, three, four I, four, five. On the outside right here, you'll hear us refer to a six technique as head up, a nine technique as outside shade, a seven technique as inside eye. Now, different variations of this throughout different parts of the country, 
But for the most part, at the higher levels of football, you'll always hear that referred to as a seven, six, or nine. So if I refer to this tonight and use these, uh, this terminology, just understand that, uh, that that's where it's coming from. And then once again, we'll talk about fits, but we'll be talking about a 5-3 fit tonight, not a 6-2. But these things are all found in first down playbook. Just wanting to give you a foundation as we get started. All right, now let's get to the actual 5-3. And I'm gonna blow this up as well. Now, a couple things about the 5-3. And I'm gonna show you because I've got two different screens opened up here. All right, I'll go back to the 3-4 here in a second. A 5-3 defense from the youth level, the way we work with it in first down playbook is that we are determining that you're gonna have five down linemen. That's why we call it a 5-3. In other words, what we're doing is we're saying you're gonna have a nose, two tackles. We're calling them tackles because they're gonna have their hand in the dirt. And we're calling these guys out here, or these players out here, ends because we think at the youth football level, they probably should have their hand in the dirt as well. Now, if you were at a, at, at a, at a high school, a college, or NFL level, this could be very easily called a 3-4 defense because these three guys inside would probably be called a nose and ends. These guys would be called backers, all right? And so what you would do is you, you probably wouldn't play the middle field close all the time, so you'd have three down linemen and four backers. That's where the three, four comes from. I'm gonna show you that in a second. But right now, I just want you to understand that what we're talking about with a five, three defense is extremely similar to what they play in a, in a three, four. And I've got video tonight that I'm gonna show you of some NFL teams playing it. And it's exactly the same as what you're gonna play at the youth football level. Obviously the techniques will be a little bit different and all that just because of uh, expertise and talent. But as we're talking about tonight, once again, a 3-4, you've got, excuse me, a 5-3. You've got five down linemen, three backers. You've got two corners and a free safety. Now, for you coaches that were here uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the 6-2. We had to play pure man coverage, meaning zero coverage. You didn't have a free safety because you had six down linemen you were committing to the run, and you had two linebackers. And so the numbers, they just don't add up. You have to put that free safety on one of these people. Now, the 5-3, one of the advantages you get with a 5-3 is you don't have to do that. Your free safety can be free. And, and that helps you in the passing game from the standpoint, you know, to be extra if somebody gets beat. It helps you in the run game to where they're, you know, they can essentially chase the ball once the ball is handed off. So this is really not pure zero coverage that you're playing you're playing really what's called man free or cover one with a free say a true free safety. Now let's look at who else is covering who you still are in good shape. Your corners will cover number one. All right. As they're doing here in, in this formation, your set, your sandbacker will cover number two strong. Your will backer will cover number two weak and your mic backer will cover number three. Always count eligibles outside in one, two, three, one, two, three, it always will come out the right way for you by playing the run. Your free safety is free. Let's take a look at some of these formations, and it should pretty much come out the same way every time. If you've got two backs in the backfield, all right, once again, the sandbacker will take number two as a tight end. If you've got two, you don't know which way they're going to break out. The mic backer will take the first one that breaks out strong. All right, the wheel backer will take the first one that breaks out weak. If two go weak, obviously the mic backer will take them. So as, you, as you're going to see, and this is what I'm not opening, I, I am just scrolling down. For, for you folks that are not familiar with First Down Playbook, I can tap on either one, any one of these drawings and it will open up and they'll give you the ability to edit this play and you'll also have coaching points along the way. I'm just trying to expedite this uh, webinar here a little bit and show you how the different coverages will mesh out from a standpoint of a 5-3 defense. So let's go on down here. Now, once you get to where two receivers are on the same side, what you should do is you need, to, you need to know to a certain degree who the skilled people, who the receivers are. If you get a formation to where there's not an extended receiver over here, there's a tight end and no wide out, and two wide outs over here, you should take your corner 
and move them over here. That way you're playing man coverage. You've got one for one right here and everybody else's rules will pretty much remain the same. You just take the number one out of it. So now just imagine that that receiver is over here. Still your Sam backer has number two and your, your backers have the backs in the backfield. If you don't do that, the problem you run into is now not only do you have your will backer covering that receiver, but now you're, you have no choice but to take your corner and make them play a linebacker right here. And that's what they want you to do. You don't wanna do that. You wanna put your best coverage players on your best coverage players and let the run players play the run. Same thing here. This is a two back slot formation. Here is a three by one formation. Now this receiver has come over here. Take your corner over here, let them play man coverage, keep everybody else the same. Now you've got your wheel backer on the tight end, Sam backer on the tight end, and you're counting outside in with your Mike backer. On and on and on, as you can see. As the formations begin to widen out and you're playing a 5-3 and you're playing man coverage, and let me back up here for a second and say that I am a big believer in youth football. When I talk about youth football now, I'm talking about you know, really 9, 10, 11, up to probably 12, play man. I'm, I'm a believer in playing man coverage. You can play zone, and don't, don't get me wrong, you can do that. But as far as simplicity goes, you're going to be a lot better off playing man coverage, in my opinion. So now when they start spreading the field out for you, look what happens to you here a little bit. If you're committing to a 5-3, once again, once you put that end's hand in the dirt, they, they're not going to pick it up. They're not going to raise up and come out here and cover down on number two. Not in a 5-3 anyway, a 3-4 they might. So that's the difference in what they play in high school, college, and NFL, and what I'm advocating right now. So your wheel backer will have to come out here and cover down, and your sand backer will come out here and cover down. But notice what we've done. We've gone to an automatic pinch on this. Why? We don't want to give up the inside run. We want to bounce all the runs to the outside where you've got your help. So the wheel backer is going to cover number two, but they're going to have vision inside too. Once the, wheel, the receiver comes to block him, he wants to whip that receiver inside. This corner wants to stay outside. Mike backer scrape inside out. So just, to, and this will happen to you. What will happen to you in youth football is they will try to spread you out and run the ball. They're not spreading you out to throw the football because odds are this guy, the quarterback right here, is not talented enough to beat you out here. But they want you to spread out like I've done it right here. Now, what we do, and, and, and once again, we have other formations here that are pretty much more conducive. You've got some unbalanced here. If you ever get an unbalanced, you should check it, and I'll talk to you about that here in a second. If you get an unbalanced formation and you've got really an extra tackle over, check your formation over one. Look at what I've done right here. I've made the nose guard play on the guard like he's the center, and I've had the tackles come down and play the guards like they're the tackles. So really, we bumped over one assignment. Still same coverage responsibility. Corner, Sam Backer's got number two, all right? Your corner's got number one over here. Will Backer's got this back. And you don't have a quarterback in this right here. So really what has to happen is your Mike Backer takes whoever does not have the ball right there, that who does not have the ball snapped to him. So let's go back here once again to the spread deal. Even empty formation right here in a 5-3 where you've got everybody spread out. And what you've done, we've taken the free safety and put them on number three in this situation right here and just let the Mike Backer spy the quarterback. And the reason we've done that is we think that a lot of youth football coaches, what they do is they spread you out so they can run the football. This guy right here is not going to beat you with his arm and in the youth football level. Every, there, there are youth football coaches on this webinar right now that are going, yeah, we, yeah, we will. And I'm here to tell you right now, I don't think that will happen. So what we would do is we would make sure we had a spy on that quarterback. We would take away the inside gaps make the ball bounce, and then also make these people, make these players out here aware that they've got man coverage, but understand after a certain amount of time, this receiver down the field very far, or if you're the number, the widest receiver, what's the odds of that quarterback throwing an out route to a receiver out here, um, you know, in, in youth football? So much so, and, and I'm gonna go down here, once again, these are all unbalanced checks that you can find in first-hand playbook, that in our opinion, if you're playing, a spread team, 
we think that you, you know, one of the ways if you if you're getting hurt with the run, take the corner and play the apex between one and two right here, and let the corner cover both of them and rally to whoever gets the ball. Let the will play the run first, rally to number two, let the Sam rally to number two. And that way what you're doing is you're gonna take the run away first. Don't let them spread you out to act like they're gonna throw the ball, all right? And really what they're trying to do is run the ball. All right, now let's get back over here to a three, four. This is in our varsity uh, area right here. And I just picked one drawing. I just wanna show you, look how similar this is to a, a five, three. The only difference is that you've got one, two, three, we call the fourth backer the jack right here. You've got four backers and three down linemen. I'm just showing you that so that when somebody starts talking to you about a three, four, and we're running into this a lot with our varsity coaches right now. I mean, we, we've got coaches that are, uh, you know, running, a, they say they run a four, two, five, and a three, three, five, and really it, it's, it's just a variation of a 4-3 and a 3-4 and a defense is what it is. And so all I'm trying to show you right here, as you're out there and you see things that are talking about a 3-4, very similar to what you're gonna run for 5-3. All right, let me get up here. Let's, let's go on here and take a look at um, some of the variations and things you can do. Now, let, let's go back for a second. Let me blow this up because I wanna make a point here. You're going to notice that what we've got is in a base 3-4, we've got a zero nose, we've got a, a four technique tackle right here, meaning they're head up. We've taken this tackle here and put them in a five technique, an outside shade, because you've got a wing out here. So my point in this is I want you to understand that a 3-4 defense is what you want it to be. In other words, you can adjust and play a three, four with an under front. And when I say an under front, meaning you've got a shade with your nose shaded out here, a five technique and a nine. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. Or you could even play a three, four and have an over front to where your nose would be shaded weak. All right. And the five technique would be your tackle and the end would just come back here and, and kind of be an extra. Now, the thing that with playing a 5-3 that more often than not, you want to play an under as opposed to an over because this guy right here is going to have his hand in the dirt and you really don't have the ability to bump him back. So I'm going to show you just some different variations once again that in, in our opinion, you don't want to play your people head up at your level because if you play them head up at your level, what you're telling this guy, and let me blow it up here so you can see, you're telling this player that they are a two gap player that they have to play either the front side. If he, if they get reached right there, that nose guard is supposed to win in the a gap right here, or you're telling them they can be a back door technique. And if that center reaches front side, they can be, they can win in the a gap. In our opinion, at the age level that you're coaching, you're better off playing your techniques like this, meaning that give them a gap right now that tackle understands They've got the C gap out here and they're going to be in a stance to where their outside hand is free. Their outside leg is going to be free and they're going to play the A, B, C gap all the way, but it's still a three, four. It's still, excuse me. I keep saying three, four. It's still a five, three to where you've got five down, but what you're telling this end is going to be a D gap player. This tackle is going to be a C gap player. You could take this nose and make them an A gap player. And then on the backside, you could even take this tackle right here, put them on this guard and make them a B-gap player. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. Let's go take a look. Let me shrink it back down here. All right, so this is a three, four under look. All right, and what I mean by that, an under front is when you have a shade technique, a five and a nine to the strength side. Now the strength side right now, you've got a balanced formation with this right here. Let me check my time, make sure I'm not getting too crazy here. Okay, so you've got the strength is called to the right here for whatever reason. So if in an under front, even if it's a five three, you tell the nose to be strong, you tell the tackle to be a big gap player strong and the end's gonna be a nine technique or in this case right here, what we call crease in between the tight end and the wing. So you've got 
shade five, nine strong, and you've got a three technique, you just reduce down on the backside, that tackle will play a three technique. And this end is going to still play a crease out here just because you have the chance of a run out here with a wing. All right, let's look at some of the other ones. When you don't have a, that out here, which you've got shade five, nine, all right, and a three technique and the end is coming off the edge right here. So just trying to show you there are different variations. These are still five, three defenses, but what you're doing is obviously you have a tight end over here. You've got extra backs over here. You should take your defense and get them over here to where you need them initially, meaning I'm, I'm going to shade everybody to the strong side. And this is just an under front. An over front would be the opposite of this. You don't play an over front very, as much in a, a five three because once again, the, the end over here in order to do that would have to be a drop player and he's really not. Okay, let's go in here. Now, you don't have to line up in an over or an under, meaning that you can line up in a pure five three head up like we talked about zero technique four technique four technique but on the snap of the ball you can make a you, you can make it before the ball snap or you can make it after they come out in the formation make a rip or a liz call if you're going to do this you want to back your lineman up a little bit just so they can get across the ball because their technique is going to be head up kind of a balanced stance if you if you worried if you are worried about them being able to get to where they need to get, take the foot to the side of where they're going to slant to and make that foot be the back foot. So on the snap of the ball, you're going to just get your left foot through the, you know through the center right here into the a gap. But look at what's happening here. On the snap of the ball, you're getting to the a gap, you're getting to the c gap and the d gap. What are you getting to? You're getting to an under front. The same thing you were uh, getting to in the uh, slide I showed you before. Now let's take a look at some examples of why you would do this. If you were going to play a 5-3 straight up right now, let's say you were going to come up and, and you weren't even going to predetermine the call. You were going to make a rip or Liz call based on the formation because you knew what they do is they run to the wing or they run to the overload side. So you could come up if your Mike Backer was savvy enough to do this, they can make a rip, rip, rip call, all right? And what rip means is that everybody is going to rip into the gap, all right, to the call. Rip right, Liz left. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and get into the edit mode here real quick. And I just want to show you so if you were to come out and, and you're balanced and they came out and they were in a, you know, a, a power formation over here with a tight end and they've been running the ball on you. Once again, rip, rip, rip tells that nose guard what they're going to do. And, and, and depending on the level that you coach, you're going to step into this guard and you can actually read that guard's block. If that guard's blocking down on you, cross over into the B gap. If that guard's blocking away from you, penetrate the A gap. And you can teach those techniques. They're really not as, quite as hard to teach as you might think. But the, the thing that's most important is to get your defense headed toward you, towards where you want them to get headed to. Now, let's just say that if they came out and they were in a Liz, uh, left formation, Liz, Liz, Liz. You get everybody headed to where they've got their players. And once again, understand that the youth offenses aren't going to be that much more complex than what you are. So if they've got a lot of folks over here in their youth offense, odds are you're going to get a run over here. And even if you get some kind of counter on the backside, you've got an end and a wheel backer over here to protect yourself. But once again, just understand that just the way that you can play head up, but really on the snap of the ball, you're moving your players. Now, in first down playbook, we've got a, a lot of different, you know, we've got pressures that we can bring your sandbacker, your Mike backer, uh, you know, your, uh, your Will backer, and then we've got some stunts. I, I just bought this one up. This is called Saw X or Tex, I guess, 5 3 Tex is what we call it. So, what I'm gonna do is blow it up here a little bit. 
and we'll open up one of them just to take a look at what it is. And, and here's a balanced formation. You know, every now and then you just need to change up your technique. And once again, you can see where we've got, you know, the same coverage responsibilities, corner on the wing outside. But what we're doing here is let's say that they're just, they're, they're beating you up inside here a little bit and you've been slanting, you've been trying to do, you know, maybe play an under front or whatever, but you're just not having much luck. And so what you want to do is you need to get people headed inside. So all you're going to do is take your tackles right here and you're going to step them out to the tight end right here. If the tight end blocks down, okay, then they'll cross the face and try to get out here into the D gap. The corner will be contained. Now you're in, you've got to teach them a little bit to where they're going to kind of just cheat, 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 cheat back here. If the ball starts outside, okay, then they can redirect. But if the ball gets handed off inside, then they can come inside. This tackle will probably be blocking out. This guard will be either up the next level or blocking down the nose. You have an opportunity to take your ends and make them extra with your Will, Mike, and Sam inside in the A, B, and C gap. But once again, just a, you know, and, and we put, excuse me, let's go back here. And we've got the, you know, the coaching uh, tips and all that in there for you as well. But just uh, change ups and let me go back here for a second before I get to the video here. So you can see the things that we, we've got a 5-3 base, which I've already told you, I don't recommend playing base uh, a lot, but then we've got a 5-3 slant to where you're slanting to the, you know, whichever way. And let me go back for a second and point this out with the slant. The slant call, and we draw our youth plays, uh, we don't draw them to scale on a field, because a lot of times, uh, you know, the fields are played uh, differently from the standpoint of youth football. But this could be a field call. You could tell your backer, make that slant call to the field. Make that slant, slant call to the boundary. You could do it. You could make the slant call to the backfield formation strength. You can do whatever you want to with that Ripper Liz call. It doesn't have to be to the formation. So keep that in mind. I kind of overlooked that as I went through it. So we've got a slant. We've got a pinch to where if you're getting, you know, beat inside where you want to take these uh, tackles, and pinch them inside. Typically, you'll cheat them up to a head up. You've got mash where you bring your mic backer, sting where you bring your sand backer, and wham where you bring your wheel backer. I showed you text. And this right here is cover two. Really, uh, and I'll just open it up here because we may have some uh, older levels, but cover two coaches really is if you're playing a quarterback that can actually beat you down the field. And we've had some questions, and we've actually had some leagues where they said, we have to play cover two. They won't let us play a single safety. So this is just a way to do that. And once again, we've, we've given you um, pretty much the same front with that right there. All right, so let's go over here, take a look at a couple uh, video shots. Let me move the Zoom stuff around here. Kendall, we in good shape. Can everybody see that? I hope. I hope Kendall's still here. All right, now, guys, as we're looking at this, all right, so here we are. Let's look at this is the uh, Rams playing the Panthers for the first game uh, this past season. And, and a very basic, you know, three – I tried to find some looks that are very similar to what you might get with uh, youth football. And the reason I chose this one, and look at what you've got right here. You've got two tight ends and a wing and a single back and a quarterback in the center. Very similar to what you could get now. And so let's look at what they're playing here. They're going to call it a 3-4. There's your nose shaded over here to the wing side. All right, there's your, your four technique tackle. There's your three technique tackle on the back side because they're shaded. They've got more, uh, more offensive players over here than over here. Here's your outside backer. Now, that's going to be called an outside backer for them. That will be your end. This will be your end down here. This is your inside backer, inside backer. And because of the really odd formation that you've got here, they've got their safeties down in the box right here. But these, really, these, take this safety right here, and you've got a 5-3 is what you're dealing with. Now, let's take a look. 
I'm just gonna move this thing through. Got motion across. They're bouncing up a little bit because of that. And all you're doing now, all right, they've made the same call. They understand that they've got extra over here. So let's look at what we got. We got an A-gap player here. We've got a B-gap player here. This guy right here is either gonna stunt or he's gonna two-gap. I don't recommend that you two-gap at the level you're gonna coach. But he is, he's two-gapping, he's playing the A-gap. This guy's playing the B-gap and he's getting doubles, so he's gonna have to get down. They got a guy coming off the edge. He needs to get up underneath that block and doesn't, or this guy's gotta scrape over the top. Okay, so they don't, don't really execute it as well as you can right there. The important parts to understand is that once again, this would be your end right here, and you'd want him to be, he needs to, he needs to come down and be tight off of this tackle rear right here as this play is run. He's too wide, so he gets kicked out. He needs to be up underneath that and bounce it to this guy right here. But not a lot of difference now, guys. I, don't get me wrong. I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry I keep saying guys. I know we have uh, female coaches on here as well. But the, the difference in the scheme is not that different. The difference in the talent is immensely different. All right, now let's go back here. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, so here we go again. Let's take a look at it like it's a 5-3 defense. You've got a nose. You've got a four, you've got a four, maybe a four eye. So here's your nose, your tackles. Here are your ends. They're, they're backers at the NFL level. And here are your two backers. Now here's your third backer, all right? They have to play, they have to respect the arm, you know, of, of Cam Newton right here. So this guy for you can get down in the box because so you're not playing Cam Newton. So let's take a look at what we got right here. All right, motion away. I right, said, so now look at what happens right here. Now he's going to come out here to the edge at initially because that would be like a wing check for them. And he might come back inside, but they've got to make sure that all their gaps are fit. Let's take a look at what goes on here. He gets wide first. He's a C gap player. Now they're communicating. Now he comes back. He comes back because guess what's happened? They bought a safety down. Now let's take a look at this defense. It's not much different than the defense you're going to play, coaches. You've got your nose, your end, your end, excuse me, your, your tackle, your tackle, your end, your end, and here are your three backers. Let's see how it works out for them. All right, here we go. Once again, he's got to, now he's got to shuffle down, make this play. Okay, really not a whole lot of difference now, I'm telling you. Now the thing that they're doing is they're, they're playing, some of them are playing gap techniques out here, some of them are playing two gap. Once again, I don't recommend that you play two gap. Kendall, we have any questions? We do. We have one from Dasman. If you have doubles on one side and the offense sends one wide receiver in motion, do you tell the cornerback to go with the motion or do you tell the uh, free safety to bump and pick up that motion receiver? Okay. You say, did you say Jasmine, Kendall? Dasman with a D. Okay, Dasman. Dasman, um, uh, I'm trying to picture, I'm, you know, we're dealing, we're, we're dealing here with, um, I'm trying to envision what you're talking about. Kendall, say it one more time. I'm going to try to get an example up here so I can draw it to make sure I'm answering the right question. If you have doubles on one side and the offense sends one wide receiver in motion, do you tell the cornerback to go with the motion or you, do you tell the free safety to bump and pick up that motion receiver? Okay, Dasmin, I'm going to use this uh, drawing right here. 
and that way, at least when I, when I answer the question, you'll know if I'm answering your question or not. If I'm not, ask it again. So what I'm hearing you say, and I'm gonna shrink the screen up here, you're asking if this corner, right, if this receiver comes over here, am I gonna tell that corner to run with them or am I gonna tell the free safety to pick it up on the other side? I'm gonna tell the corner to run with them, Dasman, and the reason I'm gonna do that is because once you, once you do that with the free safety, what does this corner have to do, really? I mean, that's probably a smaller kid. You don't want to bump them back inside. There's not a lot to do. So what I think the best thing to do, particularly at the U football, that when I would do it in the NFL, if that – once these cats come out here and your, your corners, everything gets a lot simpler if you'll just take your corners and say, that's your dude and that's your dude. Wherever they go, you go with them. And, and, and to me, that solves a lot of problems if you do that. And that way, you can let the core stay the same, too. You just the, – the only thing they have to worry about is that, you know, is it really one or two? All you do is you say, okay, like the old days with Deion Sanders, these cats are all removed right here. They're removed. Y'all play football in here. I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, just ask it again. I'll, I'll get another picture to show you. Kendall? We don't have any coming in just yet. Okay. Well, guys, that, uh, coaches, that's why we're here now to answer your question. I know we probably got in the weeds a little bit with the 5-3, but um, we'd, we'd love to have any questions that you have. Yeah, now, got, one from, got one from Kevin. He asked if you can show how to defend against a jet sweep with 5-3 defense. Okay. Let me get out of this right here. And let's see, what am I, yeah, well, I'm under in base. Let's get back to the base right here. And we'll exit out. So if you're getting, if, you know, a lot of different formations that you can get from a standpoint if, if they're running the jet sweep on you. I'm going to pick just a balanced formation uh, two by two with the tight ends. Let's see. Let me find something here that I think would be pretty fair to, to draw the jet up. I'll tell you what, let's, let's go right here with the, let's just go shoot. So typically, if you're, if you're getting the jet sweep, most of you are probably getting it with the quarterback back here. And you're getting some version of, you know, if that's a tight end there, but you're getting some version of this right here. Where you're getting motion. And the ball is snapped. And either it's either happening some version of this right here to where the ball's getting handed. So in, in the five three now, back to your question. Once again, corners are corners. So what I'm teaching this corner right here is I want him to be contained. All right. I understand he's not gonna be a very physical contained. But if I'm playing a 5-3, all right, and I've got some type of, and I'm just going to build it out too tight, I still want, I want an edge set right here with this end, all right? Now, once again, you see I've got five techniques here because of, of really it was a slot before, but now it's a tight end. But I want gap control here, okay? I'm not a big, once again, I'm not a big fan of playing a zero technique. So if it's balanced up, though, you've either got to, you know, pick your poison you got to play under or over, but this guy right here is going to fight to the play side, either back door or front side. So what I'm teaching right now is the end to turn it in. I need a Sam, all right, to play off of that. I need a Mike Backer to be a big gap player. I need a Will to scrape late to that. And then everybody else on the back side, you know, you've got fold. Really, with the, with the jet sweep, the only way that you're going to get beat at the youth level when, when I, I, let me back up a second. 
the, the, the first and easiest way you're going to get beat at the jet level is if this guy right here gets outside on you. All right, so you've got to make sure that you turn it back inside. The corner is really your second, it's going to be like secondary contained because you hope the ball never gets out there. To me, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your ends with hand in the dirt, that they get up the field, all right, and they stop the jet sweep. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. In my opinion, it's harder to run a jet sweep against a youth football team than it probably is at, at the NFL level because ends at the NFL level are going to chase down inside. They're going to be playing games. Most of the time, you're going to get box ends, and you're going to play it like a box end. When you get that, you should be pretty good against the jet sweeps because you should make it, you know, everything that happens now, you should be turning up inside when you get that. So um, that, that's, to me, the 5-3 is set up to defend the jet sweep, just like the 6-2 is. Where you're going to get into a little bit of trouble, and we'll cover that here in two weeks, is when you play a 4-4. Now you've got four backers scraping, and that defensive end could actually – you know, be stepping down inside and they could get reached on it. So I, I think you're in good shape of 5-3. Kendall? This question is from Paxton. How do you teach the DL to slant? Say it again, please. How do you teach the DL to slant? Okay. All right. That's a good question. Because I kind of went right past it, I think. Okay. So, so Paxton, what, what I would do right here now – depending on the, the age of your players is that if, if I'm coaching really, really young, and I'm going to treat, I'm going to approach it from like, let's say you're coaching a seven year old. I'm going to back them up off the ball. All right. And what I'm going to do, if it's a seven year old, I am going to let this nose guard right here have his left foot back. And I'm going to have him in a left-handed stance. And, and what he's going to do on the snap of the ball is he is going to step laterally and then he is going to take his second step with his right foot and rip, try to get it through and take his right arm and shoulder and rip it through. You don't want to, you, you definitely don't want to have them with their left foot up right here because now you can't get your right foot through. If they're older players, they can play balanced. In other words, their, their feet can be parallel uh, they still probably, not probably, they want to have one hand down. The hand that, you know, I would probably have down if it were balanced is I'd go ahead and put the right uh, hand down. So you would have the left hand out here free to help get across. But if you've got a younger player and they're going to the left, I would put them in a left-handed stance, okay? Now, what's going on out there right now, I'm going, you're, you're going like, well, man, these, these kids are not – you know, they're not ambidextrous. They're not left-handed, right-handed. If you get in that situation, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach that kid to play in a right-handed stance with uh, I me mean right hand down, and I'm going to have his feet be parallel. That way he can still kind of get done what I'm talking about. But if you can teach them to play in a left-handed stance and they're going to the left, that's what I would do. Kendall? Uh, Aaron asked, in 5-3 versus shoot, the tackles look really wide. Can you explain why they are best to start in that technique or gap? Let's go back here and find the shoot. It, yeah. Okay, let me back out of this. And I, and I believe she's talking, or they're talking about uh, shoot formation. Okay, here we go. So ask the question again, Kendall. The tackles, really wide. the tackles look really wide. Can you explain where they're best to start in that technique? Well, I would assume you're talking about this formation right here. And the reason that we've got the tackles in a five technique here is because of the threat of being blocked down on. And if this, and let me go back here, let's get into the edit mode here for a second. Well, it's a good question because if this is a, uh, a more complex, older crowd and, and they're going to motion this back over here and run like a run and shoot deal or, you know, Georgia Tech kind of stuff back in the day, 
then if that happened right there, then yeah, you can come back in here and probably slant back, or not slant, but move back inside and tighten down. But what we're looking at this as a youth football team, that if this wing is right here, there's a chance that you'll get blocked down on. So what we didn't want to do is play it here, head up with these guys, which you could though. I mean, you could, particularly if you wanted to slant either way with them. But all we've done is we've said we want to play outside. We don't want to take, take the chance of getting blocked down on and then somebody get outside of you. Because if you got blocked down on here and this, this came over here and you had to run it back to lead block, you've got some issues right now. Because you're down, he takes that gap, he's down, and he tosses that ball. You know, these backers are going to have to rally pretty quick. And they, they can. But if to answer your question, that's why they're so wide to start with. Now, let me back it up here with a little bit of shameless promotion in that you see how easy I'm adjusting everything here offensively and defensively. If you wanted to play your tackles head up, or if you wanted to play them inside, you could do that, you know, easily with first down playbook. Kendall? Those are all the questions we have so far. Okay. All right. Well, gang, once again, you know, the, a lot of different, I showed you a lot of different versions of the 5-3 tonight where you can play it base. You can play it from a standpoint of shading it. I think I would shade to the under and not the over just based on the way we're doing it. And, and, and the reason is that this is really not a backer. That's an end. And then you can also slant and stunt. Uh, but from a standpoint of the 5-3 at the youth level, I think it's a great defense just because it allows you to keep this guy free. And, I, and once again now, this, this, this guy right here, he can get up in there and be a, a run player as well as a pass player, particularly because the game's all about this, this player right here. And if this player right here can't throw the ball uh, like they can in high school, then you shouldn't be playing a high school defense against them. You just shouldn't. So uh, keep that in mind. Let's go uh, hear a couple parting shots. Uh, we've got six more of these coming up. Uh, I don't even know exactly what next week's is, but we go offense, defense, offense, defense. Um, and, you know, every week we've had more and more coaches come to it. So spread the word. We, you know, we love to have you uh, be a part of that. We have 90-day season passes uh, that come out to about $33 a month. Uh, we actually reduced our uh, youth football and flag football rates from last year somewhere around the tune of 35 to 40%. So I understand that most of you typically use, uh, your youth football coaches use it for three or four months. And uh, so that's why we've set it up that way. It's important because I got this question from a high school coach uh, today, a state championship high school coach that asked about uh, the place being there year in and year out. And understand that if you're a youth football coach and you use first down playbook and you've got all your stuff in our deal, and you leave and don't come back to the next year, all your plays are still in there. And so we, like I said, when I got that question from a high school coach today, it made me think like, wow, we need to make sure we make a bigger point of that. We never erase anything that you do in first down playbook. Your playbooks are your playbooks. They'll be there as long as you keep coming back. Um, but at the end of the day, as we get closer to youth football season, uh, you know, we're trying to help you here as much as we can scheme wise. We've got a lot of information in first down playbook but at, what we're trying to do is hand the chalk back to you and let you coach your, your, your players the way you want to because regardless if you're Bill Belichick or if you're, you know, coaching a, a youth football team or a flag football team, you get 24 hours in a day. And Bill Belichick's got a busy schedule. He's got a lot going on. But you know what he gets to do? He gets to work on football all day long. And when he goes home, he goes to bed, he gets up the next day, he comes back, he works on football all day long. You don't have that luxury. You guys and, and ladies and, uh, you know, you've got jobs, you've got families, and what you do is you do that job, you do your family job, and then you come and do this. So you don't have near enough time to, to get this done. That's where we're trying to help you. So keep that in mind. If you ever need any uh, help, feel free to email us at info at firstdownapp.com or give us a call at 512-814-6158. All right, Kendall, any last shots before we get out of here? We do have one more question from Desmond. 
With the 5-3 defense, would you blitz with any other position than the linebacker? Well, depending on what – Jasmine, that's a good question. The, the, only, the only positions – think about what you're playing here now. This is from a youth football level. We're playing a five-down look. So we're kind of – you know, as it pertains to high school football, we're already bringing a five-man rush. If, if there's a pass – and I didn't even talk much about that. That's my fault. But if there's a pass, you automatically have a five-man rush because you're playing man-free behind it. So, to me, it's a very simple deal. If you want to bring – think about this. If you want to bring a corner, free safety better cover that wide out. If you want to bring this corner, free safety got to cover that wide out. If you want to bring any of the backers – and this is in first down playbook already – I, don't, I think it's called Sting. I don't remember what the others are called. But if that Sam Backer comes, free safety better cover that wing. If that Mike Backer comes, and you can do that, that free safety better cover that running back. And if that Will Backer comes, free safety better cover the weak side wheel. So, yeah, the one thing about the 5-3, the you can bring who you want to. Just got to get that free safety to make it a, a pure zero coverage. Any others, Kendall? Nope. want to repeat just in case anyone didn't get it because we had a question about the contact information. You can email us with any information or anything at info at first down app. That's app.com. First down all spelled out. Or give us a call at 512-814-6158. Good deal. All right, gang. Once again, thank you very much. Glad you're here. Spread the word. Please be, uh, hope you come back next week. Y'all have a good week. Be safe.